My new work has been released, welcome everyone to read my work in Tomato Novel. I hope everyone can enjoy it. Your attention is the driving force behind my writing, and I will strive to tell every story well. Chapter 1 The True Heart of Heaven and Earth You are listening at NovelFull.audio In the endless Milky Way, an abnormally fluctuating range floats quietly in that place. There is no time, no space, as if it is a pitch black and an exceptionally active space. I don't know the size or length, but I can only feel the waves from somewhere, like a barrier that tightly wraps it up. However, it seems that I can feel the energy waves in between, as if I can feel the ripples of waves from somewhere special, like ripples at the exit. Looking at the starry sky from afar, there are no specks of starlight, darkness. All that comes into view is darkness, like a ghost moving forward in this universe. There is no past, no future, everything seems to be just fleeting memories, like hazy dreams, like reality, feeling like falling, as if there is perception again, as if a heavy burden is pressing on the edge of boundless thoughts. I don't know if there are any emotions or desires, and I don't know how to end this boundless loneliness in oppression. From where it comes, it goes. Is it a topic or an experience? No pain, no warmth, falling, falling, not knowing where the starting point is, not knowing where the ending point is, time, thinking about the world and the world, thinking about the withered sea and the crumbling rocks accompanied by a loud cry, the sun leaped out of the clouds in an instant. In an instant, there were no clouds for thousands of miles, breaking the nearly half-month-long situation of dark clouds shrouding the misty rain. In the magnificent garden, a figure stood under the sun, his gorgeous attire unable to conceal his sorrowful face. Although he had let go of most of his heart while anxiously waiting, in the end, the wrinkles tightly locked between his eyebrows were still highlighted, even the guard standing in the distance can experience the restlessness of walking back and forth. They silently pray in their hearts, hoping that the lady can give birth to a young master, so that their endless strength can continue to bless the safety of the young master. During the waiting process, time seemed to become unusually slow. The flowers, plants, and trees in the garden emit a charming aroma under the sunlight, giving people a sense of tranquility and vitality. The guards silently stood by, their gaze fixed on the person dressed in splendid attire, their worries and expectations intertwined in their hearts. Suddenly, an excited voice sounded in the air, and everyone's eyes immediately focused on that person. A guard excitedly ran over with a maid and reported to the people in the garden, Madam has safely given birth to a healthy young master. Upon hearing this news, the entire garden boiled up. They cheered and celebrated the good news with each other. The guards also breathed a sigh of relief, their prayers were answered, and the eldest son finally had a boy. This means that the eldest son's bloodline has been extended, and they can continue to bless him to witness a brighter future. The young master hurriedly crossed the courtyard with three entrances and six exits, and at this moment he appeared very happy. He saw upright guards and busy maids in the yard, all with a joyful expression on their faces. As the young master walked in, everyone greeted him neatly and said, Hello young master. He waved his hand and said, Everyone is busy, don't worry about me. At this moment, the parents who arrived upon hearing the news, along with Yen Si, Yen Yu, and Yen Ning, also arrived together. Because they were very concerned about the arrival of their only younger brother and child, they all arrived at their mother's house early in the morning together. They stayed with their parents, waiting for the arrival of the little one. To be honest, a quarter of an hour ago, they also held a heart hanging in their chest. At this moment, they finally placed it in their own stomachs. When they heard the words of the maid coming from the delivery room, they were all equally excited and immediately came to this courtyard. At this moment, due to the happy gong Jing Kong, they pushed the door and were about to enter the house, but were left at the entrance. Ladies and gentlemen, please wait a moment. Madam has just given birth and is now weak and susceptible to cold. When she is ready, please enter. Upon hearing this, Gong Jingkong slapped her forehead and grinned until she forgot. Thank you all for your hard work. 
Just call the guard and say, speaking of which, inform the accountant that all the guards and maids today will each receive ten silver coins. Upon hearing this, all the maids and guards are very happy and say, Thank you, young master. Gong Jingtai waved and asked them to continue their respective tasks. At this point, the father, mother, and sister have all returned to the living room, and they need to discuss arrangements for the celebration of the eldest grandson of the Gong family. This is a capital city that may not be very bustling, but it is still bustling with people. After more than half a month of dark clouds, in this bright sun, the warm sunshine sprinkles on the body, feeling the comfort of a long time ago. Inside the west gate of the capital, a thin and dry old man with a wrinkled face, who stands by the north wall, looks up at the sky. He is dressed in clean earthy yellow clothes and wears a hat of the same color, sitting at a black table. His left thumb keeps pointing on a few fingers, and the old lady sitting at the table also says, Master Wang. The weather is changing too quickly, isn't it? In the blink of an eye, it's such a big sun. The clothes I washed the day before yesterday were still damp. I'll go home soon and take them out to see the sun. Several old ladies who came with him also agreed. Yes, it's been over half a month now and I haven't seen the sun. I feel like I'm going to mold on my body. At this moment, the old lady sitting at the table said, How's it going, master? Is what I'm asking for okay? Can it work? At this moment, Master Wang seemed to have not heard anything, but the constantly rotating thumb on his four fingers indicated that he was still alive. Just as the old lady was a bit impatient and wanted to ask again, Master Wang seemed to suddenly wake up. Looking at the dark face of the old lady in front of him, he thought of something and said, Sisterly, don't worry, your youngest son's marriage to the doll in the west of the city will definitely be successful. We are waiting to have a drink at the happy bar. After finishing this, he immediately began to pack up his belongings and prepare to leave. At this point, a few people in the queue behind refused, Taoist, you can't leave now. Our debts haven't been counted yet. Master Wang only listened. Sorry everyone, I'm not feeling well today. I will definitely give you a free chance that day. I have to go back now, I can't hold on anymore, please forgive me, everyone. When they heard this, there was no intention of forcing them to stay. They all saw such good sunshine and just chatted in a warm place. They were supposed to join in the fun, but even if Wang Daochang said these words, they couldn't force them to stay. Anyway, the next time we come to tell his fortune, we will definitely have some gossip. Not to mention it, although Wang Daochang doesn't look very good, that's just a matter of accuracy. We can't accept it. At this moment, in a small restaurant in the east of the city, there is a middle-aged man who is relatively healthy and dressed in a grey long shirt. He is sitting at the eight immortals table, with a pot of steaming tea on it. Across from him, there is also a plump middle-aged man sitting, dressed in clothes and with a red face, indicating the prosperity of his family. At this moment, he is also staring at the man drinking tea in front of him with a nervous expression. He can only see his right hand drinking tea and his left hand continuously tapping on the table. The sound of tapping on the table is not loud, but the rhythm is getting faster and faster. The chubby middle-aged man next to him seems to hear a deafening feeling of drums, and his heart cannot help but follow suit. With a jump, he shouted. Master Zhang, the man in the grey long shirt across from him seemed to have not heard him. His eyes were fixed on the distant sky through the window, his eyebrows furrowed, and the relatively smooth teacup remained between his lips. He didn't see a sip, so he kept tapping, tapping, and tapping, with a powerful tap, the two-finger-thick wooden board failed to resist the seemingly gentle force, and the entire tabletop did not shake at all. Only a tattered hole appeared below the tap with the fingers the boss, who heard the commotion, rubbed his red and shiny head in pain when he saw it. I swallowed hard without making any sound. Upon hearing this voice, the middle-aged man instantly snapped out of his mind and saw the middle-aged man sitting in front of him say, Mr. Jia, you have gone too far in this matter. Although the world is not very peaceful now, 
and although there are not many starving people everywhere, the situation is also not very good. Being a person should not be too impulsive. Although your situation may not seem big, if you investigate it, it may really be a matter of family theft and extermination. Upon hearing this, Mr. Jia, who was facing him, trembled and was stunned. He quickly took out a beautiful and exquisite small cloth bag from his pocket, stood up, and held it in front of Mr. Zhang with both hands. He was extremely panicked but respectfully said, Master, please, Master. Help me, it's just a small person doing it alone. It's not related to my parents, wife, and children at home. They don't know, and I'm willing to bear it on my own. Master Zhang looked at the fat man for a long time and sighed, If you're not bad, I'll save you once. If there's another time, even if the immortals come, they won't be able to save you. Remember, remember. The chubby man immediately gratefully said, Thank you, Master. But maybe I will do it again next time, just hoping to protect my family's safety. Master Zhang said, You. Hey, forget it, I'll help you once. Don't go out for seven days this time. In addition, Master Zhang took out a coarse cloth bag from his pocket and handed it to the chubby man. Hang it in the upper right corner of the door and persist for seven days. As long as you don't interfere with such things in the future, your whole family will be worry-free. The chubby man placed his exquisite small bag on the tea table, bowed respectfully, and turned around to leave in a hurry. Chapter 2 Pleasant Hearts and Shared Joy You are listening at NovelFull.audio Master Zhang looked at the small bag on the table with complex eyes and said, Don't worry, we will definitely ensure the safety of you and your family. At this moment, Wang Daochang, who was wearing a khaki coat, rushed over and said to Master Zhang, Senior Brother. Before he could continue speaking, the person in the grey coat immediately interrupted him. He put away the heavy small cloth bag on the table, took out some and put them on the table, saying, Let's go, go out and say. The palace courtyard is full of joy, although it is not decorated everywhere, the festive atmosphere is also very lively. At this moment, Gong Jingtai successfully hugged his son and looked at his wife, who was weak but still delicate, lying on the spacious bed. He said passionately, Thank you, Hui Jun. The delicate woman on the bed waved her little fist at him, saying, It's not my son anymore. Let me tell you, Gong Jingtai, don't think about my mother giving you another baby. It's exhausting for me. This kid is really capable of tinkering around from midnight until now. Oh, but he's not as good as his sister. It's too annoying. Fortunately, my mother has good physical fitness, which has cost her half a life. The maids in the room all covered their mouths and chuckled, only looking at a maid who was about the same age as the woman. She walked up to take the baby from Gong Jingtai's embrace and said to the woman, Miss, please rest well. It's been tiring all night, and the rest will be left to the few of us. At this moment, an older woman beside her also followed suit, Madam. She only heard the woman half lying in bed say, Tsaishya, you don't understand my body. Hurry up and bring this stinky guy over and let me take a look. A few women couldn't help but look at Gong Jingtai. Young master, is this? Gong Jingtai said, let madam take a look first, otherwise I won't be at ease. The Tsaishia maid held the baby in her arms and handed it to the lady. She immediately picked it up and placed it in her arms, while disdainfully saying, Oh my, you little one is too ugly. You have a wrinkled face, and you need to eat quickly. It's better to be chubby. Just like your sisters, you need to be strong and not be like your father, thin and weak. At the same time, she didn't forget to use her slender fingers to gently tease the baby's nose, her eyes full of love that couldn't be concealed. The little baby lying in her arms, as if responding to his mother's words, immediately waved his thin and weak body. My hands kicked and kicked my little feet a few times. Everyone in the room smiled softly, leaving only the awkward young master who said, All right, my wife, who has seen and hugged her, quickly handed it over to Haishia and the others, and quickly rested. 
Haishia stepped forward to pick up the baby that the wife reluctantly gave her, and affectionately touched the baby's forehead with her nose. Her colleague, the baby, waved her small hand and resisted, causing everyone in the room to be amazed. Haishia was pleasantly surprised and said, Miss, this doll is so good. It's a sign of resistance when she was born. The lady lying in bed said, I don't even know who gave birth to the doll. It will definitely be the best in the future. When I give birth, I will definitely train him well. I saw Gong Jingtai walking up to the bed and covering her beautiful cherry lips, saying, Come on, you're just a little too big. You're ready to adjust, and at the same time, you lifted her head, pulled out the backrest, and pressed it directly onto the bed. My aunt, don't worry so far away, rest quickly. Don't think about what you have. I'll go to my father's place, and my sister will come over. I'll go entertain and see how to handle the things below. The bedridden wife said, Go, let the sisters rest, I'm fine. I'll rest and I'll recover soon. Gong Jingtai didn't know what to do next, anyway, the nanny, maidservant, so many people were all going to the big house in the hall of the palace house, my father and several elders of the family were invited, several uncles and uncles were present, and the side hall was where my mother and several sisters, as well as some good sisters of the same generation, arrived. I only heard from the hall, Old C, what about you, Old Lai Z? Jing Tai, this child was spoiled by both of you a few years ago, and everyone was very worried about being spoiled by you. Fortunately, you worked hard to send him to the military. Now that your daughter dot in dot law is watching, this is not just good. Now that you have a grandson, this family will have to rely on you more in the future. I only heard Gong Jing Tai's father say, where and where, the clan leader can't say that. Children and grandchildren have their own blessings, and this is all earned by the couple themselves. I feel ashamed to say this. I can only have enough food and clothing without giving him a better one. The old man said, well, let's not talk about it. It's all over now. Later generations of the clan will have to rely more on your family Jingtai's help. Father Gong said, the patriarch, this is a little overpraised. You don't know what kind of virtue a dog is. As long as he doesn't cause trouble to the family, he will burn Gaoxiang. Don't mention him. Now please come here to discuss. My grandson's wedding feast will also require the patriarch to take care of it. The patriarch said, although our palace is no longer beautiful, it still has a certain weight in this capital city. For this wedding feast, we will organize it once. Your daughter dot in dot law's brothers and sisters are invited to the scene. In addition, famous people in the city have to send invitations. The first few girls in your family haven't done much work. This time, they are also together. The event will be held in a beautiful way, number 34. Then a group of people in the hall discussed the details of the operation because his elders were unable to turn to Gong Jingtai for too many ideas, he walked to the hall and looked out at the increasingly slanting sun, shining brightly on this somewhat unfamiliar but still majestic and spacious courtyard, feeling a surge of emotion. At this moment, a guard walked over and said, Young master, there are two masters outside requesting to see you. Gong Jingtai asked, Master, where did you come from? What do you do? Is there anything you need to do? The guard said, they said they are the two masters from Wu Wei Mountain. They said congratulations. The young master is delighted to have a new recruit and came specifically to congratulate the young master. Chapter 3 First Meeting You are listening at Novel Full Dot Audio. Upon hearing this, Gong Jingtai was taken aback by the fact that Wu Wei Mountain is located in the western part of the empire, and little is known about its situation. If it weren't for his recent years of serving in the western army, he would definitely have kicked them out, let alone seen the people who came down inside. In the past, when he was in the camp, he occasionally learned a little bit of information from the generals, which also made him not agree. He didn't expect that today, when his son was just born and there were mysterious visitors without external notification, he was shocked by this matter. 
He still remembers the old commander saying after drinking again, the success of the empire cannot be achieved without Wu Wei's previous achievements. Mountain credit, we are not only guarding against the petty people around us, we have a heavy responsibility. Therefore, ordinary people do not know about this place, let alone someone impersonating us. I saw him pondering for a moment and saying, please bring the two masters to my yard and don't disturb the things here. The guard responded and walked quickly towards his own yard. Just a moment later, the guard had already arrived with two people. At the entrance of the yard, he said, the young master has arrived. Would you like to invite him in? I just saw a figure walking out of the room and replied, asking the two masters to come to the living room for a chat. As the words fell, two figures flashed into the doorway. One was dressed in grey attire, with a sturdy figure and a high bun. A brown red wooden hairpin arranged her hair on top of her head, with a small grey cloth bag slung across her shoulder, and a three-foot wind sword in her left hand. Her face was cold and stern, giving people a feeling of awe and awe. The other one, dressed in a black outfit, had his hair partially tied up at the back of his head in half hanging, covering his slightly chubby round face. Chiran was the Taoist wearing yellow clothes in the west of the city, but at this moment he changed his attire and was even neater than the one he had just worn. He also carried a grey shoulder bag on his side, but held a long stick with shiny black hair that was as thick as a baby's arm in his hand. I saw him holding it in his hand like a toy, but the vibration he felt as soon as it landed could also be felt as his heaviness and extraordinary. The six eyes in the hall were facing each other, and no one spoke. A sturdy figure stared at Gong Jingtai with a torch-like gaze, nodding slightly imperceptibly. A seven-foot figure, well dot proportioned and full, dressed in a fitting bright-colored outfit, highlighted Gong Jingtai's tall and upright figure. In that handsome, calm, slightly surprised and unexpected look on his face raising his hand and bowing, he said, in the next letter, my junior brother Wang Yitong has just arrived in your area. If you have any trouble, please provide us with a letter of guarantee. Then he asked, the young master knows us. I saw Gong Jingtai raise his hand and bow, saying, Master Zhang, Master Wang is good. I don't know the two of you, but when I heard some mention of Gui Shan from the generals in the Western Army, I was very curious about how they got to know each other. I only heard Zhang Yifeng say, my junior brother and I have been ordered by our master to travel around the world. When we first arrived in your place, we were delighted to hear that the young master is happy to have a new son. We came here to congratulate him. The three of them were exchanging cups and bowls in the living room, chatting happily. As Gong Jingtai poured tea, Wang Yidong gave Zhang Yifeng a hard look. The two were silently exchanging information, and Wang Yidong could see the anxiety in his eyes, but Zhang Yifeng's eyes were full of peace. After brewing the tea, Gong Jingtai said, Master, we've been talking for so long. If you have anything to say, you can help us in this city. Zhang Yifeng pondered for a moment and said, Okay, the young master has said so. My junior brother and I do have something we would like to ask the young master for help with, but we don't know if he is willing to go through such muddy waters. I only heard Zhang Yifeng say, Young master, while working in the Western Army, must have some understanding of the situation in various regions, especially this year. Some areas may have some young people due to disasters, and of course, there will be righteous people who will come to help. On the way here, my junior brother and I encountered this matter. Although the matter was resolved, some people were also affected by it. In severe cases, it may have affected their families, and some even lost their lives. Therefore, I came to young master for help. I don't know if we can offer some help. I saw Gong Jingtai's expression remain unchanged as he asked, Master, how can I be certain that I will intervene in such matters? Besides, since you are talking about the issue of human life, the matter must be quite significant. Master, how do you believe that I have the ability to solve such things? Besides, we have just met, and we need a reason to go directly to this mixed water. I only heard Zhang Yifeng recount that while they were traveling, they happened to encounter a local disaster. However, 
This was not a natural disaster, but rather a malicious act of officials and bandits colluding to harm ordinary people and bullying men and women. A man who happened to be with them acted with righteousness and rescued the victim. Although they managed to escape with the help of their senior brothers, as the other party was a petty official with a government office as a support, they were not able to take action. Xiao Lincheng, a hero, did not want him to lose his heart and enter the evil path due to this matter. Help them by finding their identities one by one. Chapter 4 Righteousness and Righteousness You are listening at NovelFull.audio Upon hearing this, Gong Jingtai already had a rough idea of the situation, but he didn't know the specific outcome. To be honest, he was very shameless towards those who bullied men and women by relying on some backstage, and risked their lives. Although he used to be naughty, he also had no experience of bullying men and women against the children of big families, officials, gentry, and aristocratic families, and ordinary people. However, he still needed to ask what the specific reason was. After investigation, he found out that a small official in the border area of this city government, with his unattainable identity, allowed his younger brother to forcibly rob women. Because of the strong resistance of the woman's father, he was unexpectedly blocked by a small official. The group of scoundrels were beaten to death, but coincidentally they were met by passing senior brothers and Jia Lincheng who were walking together. In the end, the young and energetic Jia Lincheng was furious and accidentally killed a few bastards. As a result, he was also caught on the spot by the officials. Later, he used lynching to prepare for direct extermination. Fortunately, with the help of their two brothers, he successfully escaped. However, the officials bribed a group of green forest bandits to secretly pursue and beat him, and he was bound to be put to death. Upon hearing this, Gong Jingtai understood the reason behind it and called out to the guards, saying, Tell Lin urged to bring more brothers to the southeast of the city and secretly protect the safety of Jia Linqing's family. Don't let his family know, just protect them for seven days. The guards turned around and gave a notice. Gong Jingtai turned around and said, Master Zhang, do I need to deal with this first matter? He only heard the other person say, No need to get involved in this matter. It's not a big deal, but it will take seven days for the news to travel back and forth. Once time passes, there will be no problem. However, you can pay more attention to Jia Linqing as a real man. At this moment, the voice of the guards came from the door, saying, Young master, Lin Urge has come over and wants to see you, Gong Jingtai responded and let Lin Urge in. As soon as he finished speaking, a strong man walked into the courtyard, whose clothes could not cover his entire body. He strode towards Gong Jingtai with a meteor and respectfully punched and saluted, saying, General, brothers are all gathered and ready to move at any time. I just heard that I want to show someone else the courtyard and feel uncomfortable. I want to ask about the general situation. Just listen to Gong Jingtai give a general overview of Jia Linqing's situation, and only listen to Brother Daolin say, General, rest assured that we will not let the Jia brothers suffer injustice, and we will ensure the safety of their entire family. I only heard Gong Jingtai say, take your brothers, be careful of confidentiality, and don't let too many people know. Let others act according to the situation. Lin Urge bid farewell and drove away quickly. In the southeast corner of the capital city, the gate of the Jia family courtyard, which has three entrances and three exits, is tightly closed. You can only see the equipment, weapons, and sticks placed against the wall on the empty land on the left side of the entrance. There were also several pairs of stone locks arranged neatly next to him, and a chubby man dressed in strong attire was vigorously waving the thick stick in his hand. Although his body was full, his fluent movements did not show that he was a chubby version. He could hear the whirring sound of the dancing stick, although it was a skilled movement, he always felt a state of absent-mindedness. Every now and then, I have to turn my head and stare at the small bag hanging at the door. Remembering the past few days, I feel a surge of anger in my heart. If it weren't for the sake of my family, I would have really spared no effort to do such a heinous thing in public. 
Although I know the saying, strong dragons don't overpower local snakes, I can't even say I'm a dragon. How could I fight those mischievous scoundrels with backstage? Fortunately, I met two skilled masters. Otherwise, I wouldn't have seen the sun today. Thinking of this, I saw him suddenly turn around and sweep his stick in the air, hitting me with a blow. On the wooden stake next to him, the stick in his hand snapped with a loud bang. He stood there motionless, thinking that if he had to make another move, he would have no further hesitation and would give it his all. Then he threw down his wooden stick and strode towards the living room at this moment, what Jia Linqing didn't know was that unfamiliar faces appeared on the entrance street. From their fierce eyes and bulging waists, it could be inferred that they were not kind. Hearted people. They were wandering around the Jia family gate, watching from a distance, but afraid to move forward. One of the people said, Black boss, is this inside? Isn't it just one person? Let's quickly finish the task and go back to collect the money. I saw a short and short man with a face full of flesh and a cunning expression. He reached out his withered yellow hand and slapped the back of the speaker's head, cursing, Get out, you dead third. You haven't seen the few people leaning against the wall. Our group of people are not enough to fill the gaps between their teeth. Tell our brothers to withdraw and find a solution later tonight. I only heard the so dot called third person, boss, what's the situation? Brothers are still waiting to finish the task quickly and go back to get money and drink. Let's go, let's not talk about drinking now. I don't even know if we can go back. Look at the people across the street and see how they feel. There are only a few people, and as I lean towards them, I feel nervous and murderous. That's the true manifestation of facing life and death. Let's go first and find an opportunity to take action. The third person and their accomplices explained what they heard and saw, and immediately followed the black leader away. After all, money is something that can be earned or spent. Chapter 5 The Wind Rises You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. At this moment, there are several sturdy figures by the wall outside the Jia family courtyard, some leaning against the wall, some squatting in the corner, and two boasting, thinking back to the past like a few lazy people, or as if idle tourists sighing with emotion. I only heard a suppressed voice as he looked at the crowd leaving in the distance and said, a group of miscellaneous people. After saying that, I closed my eyes and regained my senses there. However, my trembling ears could still see his focused listening, and powerful gusts of wind echoed from the courtyard. Then with a loud bang, the courtyard fell silent. He reached out his thick and calluses covered hand and grabbed his chin, saying, not bad. At this moment, Gong Jingtai's face was filled with astonishment. The two old men had been swaying their emotions, thinking that they had just given birth to a son and wanted to become masters for their unnamed doll. However, although they knew that Wuwei Mountain was not an ordinary place, they couldn't agree to anything with the surname Zhang. They wanted to take the doll away, but fortunately, their temper had improved since getting married. Otherwise, they would be given two panda eyes directly. I only heard Gong Jingtai say, thank you for the kindness of the two masters. However, the child is too young, so let's consider this matter in the long run. It's impossible to make the decision to find a master for him now. If it's really fate, the future will grow. I saw Wang Yitong still wanting to say something, but Zhang Yifeng held him back and said, Yes, young master. Because my junior brother and I cannot stay in your place for a long time, we are a bit anxious. We will meet again when the child grows up. Then, I took out two small porcelain bottles with smooth and bright colors from my shoulder bag and placed them on the table, saying, Here are two bottles of beauty and beauty pills for you. As a thank you to Jia Linqing for his help, we will meet again soon. Gong Jingtai originally intended to decline, but upon seeing Zhang Yifeng's gaze, he knew that it was necessary to accept it. Then, led by the guards, the two of them walked out of the palace and disappeared into the vast street it was night, located on an inconspicuous mountain peak amidst a myriad of mountains. 
A grey-clad old man with white hair and long beards stood tall in the air, looking up at the full moon in mid-air. He couldn't help but sigh, chaos is about to arise, and I don't know how many human disasters will happen again. In the Beijing Palace of Beijing, a scene of singing and dancing, cups and toasts intertwined, appeared one by one, with eyes full of excitement and greed, constantly changing in front of the graceful postures of the crowd. But seeing the eyes constantly scanning the seat, which was not tall but still somewhat majestic, I quickly suppressed my greed, stood up, and drank a big glass. Only the man sitting next to the corner pillar remained unmoved and his eyes remained indifferent. Thinking of the soldiers on the front line dressed in rags and the dark mess of their meals, I let out a fearless sigh in my heart. At this moment, in the courtyard of the Jia family, the bedroom in the northeast corner suddenly lit up, and a figure appeared at the table. Only a lazy voice could be heard, Xiangong, what are you doing without rest in the middle of the night? Just listen to Jia Linqing's words, you rest first, I'll go out and breathe. I walked around in the courtyard, it was pitch black, and from time to time, I could hear the sleeping whispers and intermittent lights snoring. Why, just now I heard screams and the sound of weapons colliding. I walked quickly to the main entrance and was ready to push the door open. I saw the bag hanging at the door, quietly there without any alteration. Is it just a dream? Retract your hands and stare at the door like this, standing at the door at this moment, there was also a figure standing behind the door outside the gate. He reached out his hand and stopped several people from moving objects. Those people stood motionless as if they were stationary. In the dark area not far away, several figures were also on guard. They chased a group of people, but because the other person was as smooth as a loach, they managed to scatter and hide in the darkness. At this moment, Jia Lincheng listened attentively to the barking of dogs and the sound of night shifts in the distance, shook his head and said to himself, what a difficult day. However, thinking of Master Zhang's words, he firmly returned to his room to rest. Upon hearing the sound of footsteps as they left, the people outside the courtyard immediately became empty. Outside the wall, a few people carried their belongings and quickly left, leaving only a few who were still in the darkness, vigilantly looking at the already dark courtyard. A deserted courtyard, with dim yellow lights reflecting several pale faces, several ragged bodies, and large bloodstains on their clothes, indicating that they had undergone a fierce battle. Thinking of everything just now, they felt a sense of trembling and powerless. This person is the group of black boss wandering outside the Jia mansion in the daytime. He saw a black boss bared his teeth and sucked in the cold air. There was a short arrow piercing through his arms and forearms, which could be considered a man. With the help of the third person, he vigorously pulled out his arrow feathers. Fortunately, he had not been poisoned. Otherwise, he would have been directly handed over here, not to mention taking the money. Looking at the remaining few frightened and pale-faced subordinates, he also cursed in his heart, You Yang Bai, you dare to deceive the brothers. Isn't it just a brave and chubby guy? Grandma, it's so good that I broke off several brothers and still suffered such serious injuries. He pointed to two of them who were not injured and said, you two will go out of the city early tomorrow morning and ask him to pay more. Otherwise, tell him that the brothers won't do it. Continuation 13 I saw two pale faces, showing a hint of joy and saying, Okay boss, we must hurry back as soon as possible. Chapter 6 Fate, Origin You are listening at NovelFull.audio Late at night, in the palace courtyard, although not brightly lit, it was also brightly lit. In the bedroom and side room, a beautiful girl looked at the child in the stroller with a happy smile, thinking about the promises made by the young lady and uncle, her eyes shining brightly like a fool. What she didn't know was that the child lying in the soft and comfortable stroller was trying hard to suck on his small nose and open his eyes, but the feedback in his eyes was a chaos. He could hear external sounds and feel the warm and long-lost comfort under his body. His two little hands gently touched each other's five fingers, 
still in the human world a small capital city with a population of over 200,000 and a length of about 7 kilometers from north to south has become lively due to the birth of a baby. For three consecutive days, the Qing, which used to be the father of the Gong family, is now filled with spring light. It is like some members of those cold-eyed families in the past, openly and secretly mocking and laughing at each other. In recent days, their mouths have been as smooth as eating honey pomelo. The convoy at the entrance can all queue up to the east gate, of course, the largest convoy is still considered good for the daughter. In laws family, watching the prefectural officials accompanying their in laws throughout the journey. I couldn't help but feel a myriad of emotions in my heart. I once couldn't buy half of the affection with just my old face, oh. Now it's also bowing down one after another in the backyard of the palace, Meng Huijun met several sister. In. Law, and the atmosphere was lively. A beautiful and dignified woman looked at the woman standing next to her and said, Tsai Xia, your eldest son has already been born. When should you also share the household chores for your young lady? I saw several beautiful women in the room all looking at the beautiful woman with red faces and red ears, and two small hands struggling to grip the corners of her clothes. I only heard the faint and audible answer, it's all up to the young lady's arrangement. Meng Huijun held her on the shoulder and said, you used to use the young master as an excuse, but now you can't think about it anymore. We sisters have been together for more than ten years, and we can't let you get out of the way anymore. Even if you really don't like your husband, you have to go to find it yourself and come to the sister's place. I only heard the girl blush and answer anxiously, I like it, I like it. After speaking, I looked up and saw everyone's smiling faces. In an instant, their lively and lovely faces were once again shining in the sunset, beautiful beyond measure. Everyone was chatting happily, ignoring the sleeping baby lying in the rocking cart. At this moment, he was filled with emotions lying there, with closed eyes, I don't know how long it has been since I arrived at this place. I used to be a great young man and an advanced person, but I never believed in ghosts and gods. I only believed that with my own efforts, I could complete all the life that moved me. But now, I am not wavering, thinking about the comrades who were injured in the dense jungle because of rescuing me. I look at the comrades who are still bleeding on the ground, as well as the groups of despicable people, who have brazenly committed such heinous acts to our country in this peaceful period, and must be arrested. Accepting the ultimate judgment of the motherland, unfortunately, the enemy was too well prepared and had already lost several comrades. Seeing the evil in front of them, we cannot let them escape. Looking at the fallen comrades following us, there is no other choice but to detonate the ring of justice and let all the evil disappear together. Come on, brothers, it's up to you. This is also the last cry of his life. Why are you still alive? It's not about being alive, but about being alive. Whether you regret it or remain indifferent, there are both sadness and comfort. Thinking about your elderly father at home, and often thinking about your mother who is holding a great grandson, he can only hang his curtains alone at this moment. Will it be sad? Will there be someone to care for in the future family? Have all the comrades who have acted together been released from danger darkness swept through once again, sinking into a deep sleep, as if seeing brothers fighting together, standing tall in a vast cemetery with their hats off, as if seeing the happy life of their parents in their later years, as if seeing a group of brothers busy there, as if seeing a few stumbling figures gradually fading away, as if hearing brothers say, Brother, our parents have already seen us off, and we will be at ease for a lifetime. You should rest well, brothers. See you in the next life. While taking care of the baby, the maid suddenly saw that the little baby had left a line of tears on its face. She quickly whispered to the group of ladies who were still joking about Saishia, saying, Madam, the young master has shed tears. At this moment, the big guy was very surprised, and his first reaction was to be hungry. So, a group of beautiful women singing and dancing were busy with the little baby's food on the winding and winding 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 path in the west of the city, three figures were parting ways. Watching the chubby figure pair bid farewell, 
they only saw a chubby young man wearing a grey dress with all his hair raised and said to another chubby young man, although I did not take you as an apprentice, imparting our martial arts skills is also part of our fate. We cannot prove that we are capable of harming others. If we know how to do evil things based on this, we will personally retract my teachings. The chubby man immediately knelt down and said, Master Xie, teach martial arts. I swear to heaven that I will not bully the weak and will definitely live up to master's wishes. He stood aside, his grey hair hanging high and nodded slightly. I only heard him say, Junior brother, we're leaving. Time is running out. I saw the chubby master say, All right, get up, go back and practice well, don't call me my name, just remember to be a teacher. When you can proficiently use my weapons, it's considered beginner. We have a chance to see each other again. After saying this, I immediately picked up the chubby man kneeling on the ground, turned around, and rushed away with the grey clothes, Junior brother, you really plan to take Jia Linsheng as your disciple. He is already old, and even if he is working hard, his achievements will not be too high. It's okay, senior brother. Although this son cannot become a great talent, you also appreciate his behavior and style. Besides, his family background is not wrong. Although his body and bones are not as good as when he was young, he is still very good in this environment now and has a certain foundation. As long as I can teach him the refining of essence, he can also achieve great things. If fate arises in the future, it's not too late. Silent all the way, the two senior brothers rushed westward. Chapter 7 First Meeting you are listening at NovelFull.audio. In the Jia family courtyard, Jia Linsheng stood by the weapon rack of the martial arts training ground, struggling to grasp a pitch-black shiny stick with both hands, wanting to play a set of stick techniques taught by his master. He thought that his master was holding this stick as easily and comfortably as a wooden stick, and that it weighed a thousand pounds in his own hands. He thought that every day under the guidance of his master for the past month, he had to treat his old father to his master in martial arts, which was a huge difference after a month of silence in the palace, lights and decorations were once again set up, and the door frames were adorned with festive couplets and bright red characters, making the festive atmosphere even more lively. All of this was carried out in an orderly manner under the leadership of the noble young lady. The palace gate was bustling with gongs and drums and a handsome man on a white horse led eight flower sedans slowly through the bustling crowd. A joyful halt fluttered in the air, attracting children to run passionately. The swinging of hanging copper coins also drew cheers from the crowd. In the firecracker hall, the flower sedans still stopped in front of the majestic main entrance with two large lions. A group of people in bright red festive clothes, together holding the bride in red shoes, red clothes, and red hats, walked slowly. Move forward. At this moment, Saishia was being held by her left and right as she walked towards the big gate. Through the red veil, she saw Saishia walking in the direction of the main gate and was immediately stunned. She only listened to the woman beside her, Miss Saishia is so lucky. This door can only be accessed by young women. I have opened it wide for you today. I envy you very much. If only my daughter had half of your luck. I saw several women walking with them all bulging envious gazes. In the lobby, below the big red she character, Gong Jingtai's parents and father.in.law and mother.in.law sat up respectively, receiving a pair of tea from the newlyweds and drinking it all in one go. Meng Huijuan's father said, Girl, your adoptive mother and I have been treating you like a daughter for over a decade. We were originally planning to find a good family for you, but you just don't want to leave Huijun. Anyway, since you insist, your adoptive mother and I are your solid support. Don't be wronged, don't forget that there are also parents and three brothers at home number 34, I saw the red under the cover, the bright and charming on my face, and a line of clear tears flowed down in an instant. Crying in the mouth, Saishia, thank you, father and mother. With the last sentence of the master of ceremonies, she was sent into the bridal chamber, so the guests cheered heartily. 
Tsai Xia was also helped into her own world by several sisters in her shyness in the icy and snowy terrain, a convoy is slowly moving forward, with winding ruts leaving deep marks on the ground covered in white snow. A carriage window was open, revealing a beautiful little girl's face, big eyes, skin as white as snow, wearing a thick pink cotton hat, and two small hands lying by the window were also surrounded by thick goose-down covers, gazing at the white city road getting closer and closer in the distance, Dad is about to arrive, and I can even see the city wall number 34. I saw a dignified and graceful woman sitting next to the middle dot aged man with a majestic aura on the inside, tightly covering herself on. The cotton thick path, all right, hurry up and close the window. You're going to freeze my mother to death, the little girl playfully waved her hand and said, Mother, it's not cold. You don't even feel cold when you see your father. You're still wearing such a thick blanket number 34, the woman heard this dissatisfaction and glared at the man beside her, your good daughter insists on freezing me and going to find your Tsuihua number 34 number 34, Er Nyang is also very good, the little girl blinked her big eyes and said, I don't know if third brother and second mother are cold or not, at this moment, a sound came through the window, sir, I found a fainting female doll on the roadside. Do you want help number 34, just listen to the man sitting there saying, help, if you faint here this day, you will die number 34, then the little girl in the car made a fuss to get off and take a look at the novelty in the scene. The middle dot aged man had no choice but to follow her down and look at the girl who had been rescued. She was dressed in thin clothes, covering her thin and small body, with a cold pale face and bright red hands. At this moment, she was curled up together and trembling. The little girl next to her saw that she was not as big as a child, so she immediately took off the thick hat she wore on her head and put it on the little doll. She held the man in her hand and said, Dad, help this little sister. Look at her swollen hands. The young man at this moment also felt pity and looked at his daughter, who was not wearing a hat, and her face turned red instantly, Fubo, arranged to bring her along. The little girl who opened her eyes suddenly became alert when she found herself lying on a soft bed, only to hear the voice of a child, Dad, she's awake. Looking sideways, I saw a middle dot aged man with a dignified and gentle demeanor. Seeing the little girl's awakening also brought me a sense of relief, little doll, what about your family? They're so small, why are they running alone outside? Upon hearing these words, the little girl lying there immediately cried. After a while, she got up and knelt down by the bed, saying, Thank you, sir for saving my life. There is no one left in my family. I went to seek refuge with my uncle alone, but I couldn't find him at home either number 34, upon hearing this, the middle dot aged man let out a sigh. No parent would have watched their child walk alone in this icy and snowy world, only to hear him say, if you don't have a place to go, just stay with us for now. You can leave when you find your loved ones, at this moment, I saw the gentle and kind little girl running over and saying, all right, little sister, what's your name number 34, just listen to the little girl leaning against the bed and saying, my name is Tsai Xia, and I saw her look up and say, thank you for taking me in, sir. Please arrange something for me to do. Although I'm not very old, I know how to do laundry and cooking. I saw the middle dot aged man staring at his daughter with a knowing smile and saying, you don't need to do anything anymore, just accompany my daughter, so she also has a companion. The little girl just hugged the man and shook her arm, saying, thank you, dad. If my older brothers bully me again in the future, I will also have a helper number 34, I saw her approach and hold on to the little girl's cold, red little hand, my name is Hui Jun, don't be afraid in the future. Sister will cover you up, and you will accompany me to practice martial arts together. It's really boring to be alone. You can have whatever your sister has in the future, the middle dot aged man standing on the side shook his head helplessly as he looked at his small face, which had just regained some blood color and was thin. Chapter 8 Deep Love and Righteousness You are listening at Novel Full Audio. Winter goes and spring comes, spring comes and winter goes after swaying like this for many years, Saishia still followed the small figure in the mansion. 
The difference now is that in the martial arts training field, there are two big girls dressed in white strong clothing and standing tall, with their flowing long hair dancing gracefully with the majestic long sword standing in the distant pavilion, a middle dot aged woman of medium stature in white attire with a kind face nodded and said to the middle dot aged man and woman standing next to her, Master Meng, Madam, Madam Air, Miss Huijun, and Tsai Xia have already mastered their martial arts. I don't have much to teach them. I saw a man with a majestic and full aura, with strands of white hair interspersed between his hair, saying, Thank you, immortal. I am extremely grateful for the cultivation of my daughter in recent years. Please allow us to prepare a meager banquet and send her off. The middle dot aged woman said, Mr. Dream, you don't need to be polite. I'll explain to them later and we'll say goodbye. We'll have a chance to meet again. She walked up to the two women and said, Your martial arts have been completed, and there's nothing I can entrust to you. As a teacher, I'm leaving now. You should practice diligently in the future and not mention the name of your master. Finally, looking at Tsai Xia, he said, Tsai Xia, we didn't have a chance, but we should thank Hui Jun well. Although you have a good understanding, you cannot be complacent. You should work hard to protect the safety of your young lady. She is too naughty. I saw Tsai Xia saying, Master, don't worry, even if you don't arrange, I will definitely protect my sister's safety. Master, you also underestimate your disciple too much. I can protect myself, Hui Jun murmured. The middle dot aged woman smiled and said, I know. After I leave, you must be good, okay. In the bridal chamber, the red candlelight reflected the colors of the whole house, and the rosy clouds covered in red were also hazy at this moment. Looking back on more than a decade, we followed in the footsteps of Sister Hui Jun, and in that home that was not originally home, we also had our own happy belonging. Watching the anger and resistance of the young lady when the master offered her a marriage for the first time, we followed the young lady repeatedly to refuse marriage, saw the playboys who were beaten away by the young lady, and the scene of vigorous competition in the high martial arts wedding arena. In the end, no one could have imagined that she would be held back by a thug-like soldier. Thinking of the scene of being captured by this uncle through life strategy, even the beautiful woman under the cover couldn't help but smile. Although the uncle's strength was not very high, he was much better than the other playboys. The most important thing was that under the mask of that scoundrel, there was a weak heart hidden, which was perfectly matched with the rough and wild personality of the young lady. I once faced the pursuit of the third young master myself, but the young lady resisted it with her own strength. Together, they experienced many joys and sorrows, witnessing their growth and happiness. Their friendship intersected in the ice and snow, blooming in this plain and passionate youth, warming each other's hearts. From that moment on, she decided to accompany this sister for life when she first heard that the young lady was about to betroth herself to her uncle, her head was also dizzy as she reached out her slender little hand to stroke the young lady's forehead and said, Miss, you have a fever. Go, you just had a fever. Have you seen my father? Be good to my mother, but there are also two women living together. Look at those playboys outside who are not three wives and four concubines. Do you know why they were all beaten away? What kind of goods are they? Don't think I don't know. Your uncle has been here for several years, and you still don't understand. Although my martial arts skills cannot beat me, with his unremitting efforts after getting married, I can still be called the last general now. Although it's only leading a few thousand people, it's much stronger than those bags of wine and rice. Do you really want to never get married for a lifetime, do not marry, Tsaishia hugged them in her arms and answered decisively, I'll keep you and our daughter safe. I'll teach her martial arts when the time comes, and we can't let anyone bully our little princess. I just heard Hui Jun say, you think so? I don't trust your uncle to work alone thousands of kilometers away. You can't let him bring you a new sister anymore, can you? I only heard Tsai Xia smirk and say, with you around, does he dare? Hui Jun said, it's not a question of daring. Look, this is already your second niece. If the next one is still a young woman, my uncle won't say anything. 
How do our parents-in-law face them in this family? You know what kind of faces these people have. Look at the treatment of the three sisters, and then look at ourselves with two daughters. Your sister is also anxious. You can't live your life alone anyway, right? I just listened to Huejuan's melancholic words, I'll be more generous and divide your uncle in half, so that there won't be anyone else coming to share. Pushi Tsaishia laughed out loud and said, My good sister, you're counting on your younger sister. Before you even cast a glance at her bazi, you're looking for a concubine for your husband. Don't laugh at my sister for not joking with you. Didn't you look outside? My mother dot in dot law won't say anything, but it's hard to resist the fear of others. No, I don't want to get involved in the matter between you two. I just need to bring up our little doll, and I'm still waiting to hold our young master. You have to worry about other things yourself, and I won't share this with you, Tsaishia smiled. Hui Jun said, in a while, I'll go back and tell my mother to recognize you as my goddaughter. No, the master and lady are very kind to me, so don't let them cause trouble, Tsaishia said. You don't have to worry, it's definitely right to listen to your sister. You can always eat and drink spicy food with her. Besides, although your uncle may not be very powerful, he is really very powerful, said Hui Jun Chi Chi with a smile. Chapter 9 Dreams Come True You are listening at NovelFull.audio At this moment, there was a lot of laughter and joy in the courtyard of the palace mansion, so even under the hospitality of the guests, the palace family was bustling with excitement. At this moment, in Gong Jingtai, they had already walked from the surrounding winery to the last wave. As soon as they entered this bustling small courtyard, a hundred strong men suddenly brushed and stopped, their drinking movements, and everyone silently stared at the groom dressed in red with affection. I saw 110 people standing up with neat and uniform movements, arching their hands and walking neatly, wishing General, your beautiful dream comes true. The sound moves beyond the nine clouds. When the other courtyard heard this passionate shout, it was immediately lively and a commotion sounded Meng Hui Jun, who was teasing her son, heard this and smiled foolishly, thinking to herself, okay, Gong Jingtai, I'll see how I deal with you in the future. The beautiful woman under the bridal chamber candles couldn't help but move her heart when she heard this loud slogan. Suddenly, I heard a gruesome sound coming from inside the room, sister is right. This man is all a playboy. Fortunately, his sister is still so kind to him. We must teach him a good lesson to save him from causing trouble for his sister, in an instant, I completely forgot about my happy day today. Looking up and seeing myself under a red veil, my eyes were instantly filled with flying clouds. Beiyuan Gong Jingtai laughed and cursed angrily, you sons of bitches have given me a long face. Everyone has one gene of Baijiu today. Don't rest if you can't finish drinking it. Just train me number 34, suddenly, the cheers of all the brothers filled with joy, General Xia. Suddenly, a group of men surrounded with large wine bowls. At this moment, Lin Urge immediately shouted out, Why are you holding such a large wine bowl? Are you preparing to make the general drunk? We can't have a wedding. Don't make a fuss and go back. At this moment, Du Hua standing next to Lin Urge also loudly agreed, Everyone sit back, when will you be able to enjoy the general's wedding banquet after all this commotion? Come one by one, don't worry number 34, at the same time, he took out a delicate white large-bellied wine glass prepared on the side and smiled as he said, General, today is your day of great joy. There are many brothers, so take your time. Everyone hopes to drink with you at this moment to bring some joy to you. You use this, we use bowls, Gong Jingtai suddenly felt something was wrong and thought to himself, how could these guys change their personalities? However, it's okay. Today, he can't be too crazy. He took Du Hua and handed him a glass of wine, and saw the blessing sent by his brothers at this moment, Lin Urge secretly gave Du Hua a thumbs up and a mischievous smile from behind. Finally, Gong Jingtai was carried into the brightly lit bridal chamber by his brothers, and the beauty eagerly awaited her. In the other courtyard, 
Only Lin Urge whispered to each other, Du Hua, you're still a sharp kid. If it weren't for your suggestion to change the general's glass, the big guy would definitely not have had a good time drinking number 34, number 34, get lost, it's not your kid who came up with an idea. We all drink the same, and we don't know what good food our brothers are eating in the camp, Du Hua Dao number 34, what other steamed buns can be paired with pickled vegetables. Red and red under the cover, Tsai Xia looked through the cover at the groom who had been helped into the room and placed on a spacious and soft bed, falling asleep. Helplessly, she said, only you, as an uncle, can drink like this, and that general can accompany the big head soldiers to drink without waking them up. I only heard the sound coming from inside, why are you still called uncle? From today on, you are my person. Are you going to change your name number 34, the broad and gentle red bedside, under the red cover, came the strange sound of inquiry, you didn't drink too much, how did you get carried back? I saw Gong Jingtai lying there diagonally, one hand supporting his heavy head, while his big tongue said, so. What are those guys thinking about? Don't, don't think I don't know. Give them some face today, and next time, make sure to drink them all and lie on the table, I saw him leaning there, taking a few deep breaths, struggling to sit up and say, gazing at the tightly intertwined pair of delicate white and tender hands under his red attire. He effortlessly reached out his seemingly thick palm and gently lifted the red cap. Suddenly, her eyes lit up, and she had a melon seed face with a beautiful appearance, bright eyes and white teeth, eyebrows and bangs. Her face was flushed with a hint of shyness, revealing a beautiful woman. Suddenly, he stopped his movements and laughed foolishly. Tsaishia looked at the man in front of her for a moment, speechless. She hadn't even looked at him in the eye every day, and now she was so happy that the saliva was flowing out. I saw her shy and stiff. Give a soft shout number 34, Xiangong, number 34, without any response, he extended his slender little hand and shook it in front of him for a moment, Xiangong number 34, I saw the drunken guy smirk foolishly as if he had regained his senses from beyond beautiful, I feel like I'm not alone anymore number 34, number 34, what is not a person, Saishia asked. Number 34, it's okay, it's okay, he stood up unsteadily, struggled to walk to the table, picked up the prepared red and exquisite wine jug, and worked hard to maintain the stability of his hands. He poured two large glasses of intoxicating wine into the two red wine glasses. I saw Tsaishia quickly stand up and come to support him, only to hear him say, You, you don't need to worry, today is your big day. You can't let yourself work hard, I'll do it. I saw him swaying and holding the seemingly full two glasses of fine wine, walking up to Tsaishia and saying affectionately with a strong alcoholic aura all over his body, Come on, madam, drink, drink, and hand over a toast number 34. Gong Jingtai watched as Tsaishia took the wine glass but his two beautiful eyes stared at him motionless. He couldn't help but look around at himself, it's okay. Suddenly heard number 34, Pushi, with a light smile. Looking up, I saw the sweet smile of Tsaishiao, as if the snow lotus in the Tian Shan mountains were blooming, pure and flawless. Supported by the rosy 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 glow after drinking, we blew out the swaying red candle and rushed towards the happy wedding night that belonged to them. Suddenly, ah, uh, a man's scream came from the bridal chamber naked, Gong Jingtai sat up from the bed and lifted the blanket to eat. He found several large nuts with water chestnuts lying there peacefully, rubbing his sore waist. At the same time, seeing the efforts of Tsaishia to suppress her smile, she quickly pushed the nut aside and threw Tsaishia onto the soft and spacious bed. Stuff the shy cherry with one mouthful. With one hand climbing up the relatively high mountain range, there were deep whistles and proud shyness. In that pitch-black night, it seemed like a new knight was searching for the true meaning of his life, constantly adapting, fighting hard, from unfamiliarity to familiarity, and then from familiarity to mastery. Thus stumbled into the beginning of life's happiness. Chapter 10 Happy Family You are listening at NovelFull.audio de Ko Loi Zara Trong Quatrin Lay Text.